All right, so let's look at this um, column buckling problem. <clears throat> so this one, um, for some of these beams, if it's a very common shape, a common I-beam or U-beam, even a rectangular beams, uh, sometimes in the back of the book, uh, they will tell you all the dimensions, all the values, all of the, um, like for this one, this W14 by 30, um, from the back of the book, um, and we are in English units, uh, the area of this cross section is 8.85 inches squared. The IX is 291 inches to the fourth, and the IY is 19.6 inches to the fourth. And that is just from the, um, cro the shape of the cross section. Okay? Um, and the material, though the material uh, will tell us the modulus of elasticity, so this is 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI from the back of the book, and the yield stress, 50 KSI. Um, but it doesn't tell us the buckling stress. we got to figure out if this is buckling. We want to find the largest axial force P that can be applied without causing it to buckle. Assumed it to be pinned and pinned at both sides, so the K value is 1 for that equation. What's our equation? The critical force is pi squared EI over KL squared. All right. So um, if we know the, the material E, if we know the shape I, and we know this length right here, 25 feet, would be the L, the axial length. So the length is, is the length, the long length in the axial direction, right? We can find the largest axial force that won't cause it to buckle. So uh, it's not too bad. Just plugging in uh, to our equations. The E, 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI. Uh, let me really look at my units here. Um, the I, 19.6. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, now, um, how is it going to buckle? How is it going to buckle? It is going to buckle about the weaker IY axis. Um, I mean, I could calculate the force that would cause it to buckle about the, I, the X axis, but it's going to be much, much larger than the force that would cause it to buckle about the Y axis. Let me use the weaker, it's going to buckle about the weaker axis. Let me use a smaller I value, 19.6 right here, inches to the fourth. All right, 19.6 inches to the fourth. All right, divided by K, it's pin to pin, L, 25 feet. Now, I am looking at all this kips per square inch, inches to the fourth. I need inches squared on the bottom. So 25 feet times 12, that, that would be how many inches. All right, and that KL value squared. The P, the critical force, 62.3 kips. 62.3 kips. That is the largest force before it will buckle. So you can apply 50, 51, 52, 60, 61, but right around 62.3, um, it is going to buckle. Now, let's make sure that it doesn't yield. All right, it didn't ask, and sometimes I'll ask, I'll say, hey, make sure it doesn't yield first. Um, what stress is this? The stress would be 62.3 kips over the eight, the cross-sectional area, 8.85 inches squared. Um, so it will buckle at a stress of 7.04 KSI. That is the critical buckling stress. Let's compare that. Yeah, it's going to yield at 50. So yes, this, this is so long that it definitely buckles before it gets kind of crushed. Sometimes I think of yielding as kind of crushing. Um, no, this is going to buckle first uh, when it gets to a stress of 7.04, which is a force of 62.3. Okay, but it wasn't too bad, you know, that we've got an equation for the critical force. Pi squared E I over KL squared. Make sure you got the E of the material, the I of the shape. Use the smaller. If the IX and IY are different values, use the smaller one. Um, and then if it's pinned and pinned, this K value is 1, and this length would be here. I just have to worry about the, um, the, the units there. I'm very careful with the units. All right.